everyone. My name is Nathan Jones, and if you're new here, welcome. I talk about all things movies, specifically Blu-rays, but today we're talking about horror films, just in time for Halloween. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little intro. Uh, today we are just on the verge of Halloween, and I'm going to be uploading this the day before Halloween. In fact, I've, if you've noticed, been uploading a lot of things this week. I have a lot of things in the queue that I've been already been filming, and I've just kind of stuff them all at the end of the in the end of the month uh, and I wanted to make it all before Halloween even ended in fact there's going to be a video tomorrow as well and I hope you enjoyed the video uh, the day before as well with Steph but today we are doing the horror recommendations I'm continuing from my uh, 1920s to 1960s but this time we're talking about the 1970s all the way to 2010s uh, and so my favorite horror films from each of those decades so the 70s 80s 90s 2000s and 2010s, and then also one film that I have not seen from that particular decade and that I'm excited to watch that I own, and I'm really, really um, gonna excited to dive deep into these. So I, I hope all of you are watching some horror films, and I, always, I even hope some of you are going to be watching some horror films after Halloween because, you know, the season really never ends, especially this year because this year's been really, really crazy. So Let's just jump straight into my horror recommendations for um, the 1970s. I hope you're excited. Uh, I'm really curious to know yours. Let's jump in. All right, so I'm going to go in uh, sequential order. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to go in sequential order when it comes out to these releases that come out. And uh, the first set of releases are actually is actually a trilogy that I have on Arrow. And it is that it came out in 1970, 1971, and 1974. And this is a set that I have not seen. I haven't seen any of the films in this, but I know that there's a lot of inspiration, mainly from the Hammer Horror Dracula series. And so besides that, knowing that, and this is, these are Japanese films. And so these are films that I haven't seen. So uh, I, I decided to cheat and pick this particular uh, trilogy right here and uh, to showcase something that I haven't seen. And so what am I talking about? I'm talking about the Bloodthirsty trilogy. And look at that artwork. I don't know if you can see it very well. Uh, my camera likes to do some weird focusing things. Um, but I really love the original artwork for this particular set. I actually switched the artwork from this. The commissioned artwork that uh, Arrow actually did is right there. The Bloodthirsty Trilogy. Right there you have the Vampire Doll from 1970, Lake of Dracula from 1971, and Evil of Dracula from 74. And all of these films are Japanese films. And so I'm kind of curious to see what the inspiration for these 1970s uh, Dracula films are specifically for Japan. So that's going to be really interesting to check out. And I'm definitely going to be watching this maybe uh, this year, but maybe next year as well. And so I'm really, really excited to check out these films whenever I do get to sink my things into them, because I hope you are as well. So let's actually move on to my favorite film of the 1970s. There were so many things to choose from, and I, I had a really hard time figuring it out, but I think this one is a, is a really good one, and I hope you enjoy it as well. All right, what film am I talking about? I'm talking about the 1979 classic. It's a sci-fi horror. That's what I like to call it. Um, I'm talking about Ridley Scott's Alien. Holy shit, this movie is just amazing, right? It's one of the best films of all time, in my opinion, and uh, my friend, my buddy Chris... Uh, Hurtado, this is like one of his favorite films ever. In fact, he is, he's named as Cat Jonesy after this film. Uh, but also, I, I like to think it was from me because, you know, Jones. But Alien, 1979. Whoa, what a great film. I mean, like seriously, like Sigourney Weaver is like phenomenal. And it's one of those, um, one of the early examples of how amazing uh, a female can be in the lead and also just take over the film and be a badass. So like I grew up with Buffy the Vampire Slayer, so I had a really strong... Um, female role model, I guess, growing up uh, in killing vampires. But um, going back and watching this after that fact, because I hadn't seen Alien, uh, it was probably a decade ago uh, by this time. So you know, late teens for me when I, I finally watched this film and it just blew me away. And I've seen it since then probably six or seven times. It's that good. And it's an amazing film. It's like I said, it's a science fiction horror film. I'm sure most of you have seen it. Uh, Geiger's amazing production uh, and set design and like the, the creature itself. Um, it's very sexual. Um, and so there's a lot of themes kind of going over um, pervading this film. But uh, besides that, it's just an excellent horror film and I, I highly recommend it. And then Aliens kind of switched uh, you know, into the action side of things. But this one is wonderful. If you haven't seen Alien, do yourself a favor, seriously, one of the best films of the 70s and just one of the best films of all time. So yeah, I could have picked Jaws or something along those lines, but 
I picked this one. So um, I hope you enjoyed my pick. What about you? What, uh, what in the 1970s are your favorite films? Uh, what's one that you want to check out and what's one is, that is your favorite? Let's move on here to the 1980s. All right, so the 1980s is like just one of the most awesome times for horror, and everyone who's a horror fan already knows that. The practical effects of this particular decade are, bar none, like some of the best practical effects of all time. And, uh, you know, it's just so, so creative and so wonderful to see all these uh, creative minds at work. And so it was really hard for me to choose films uh, from this particular decade. I know my favorite, but I had to fix something that I hadn't seen, right? And so I actually picked 1981's the Howling. And right here, this is the Scream Factory edition. Um, I picked this up not too long ago during this month, and I just haven't seen it yet, right? I, I've seen, obviously, The American Werewolf in London, which I think came out in the same year as this film, and there was also uh, another werewolf film that is just blinking on my mind. Tell me down in the comment section um, down below, but you know, this is one werewolf film that I've, I've heard the transformation scene. I actually have seen the transformation scene. That's one of the things that I have seen from this film because obviously it's been in clips uh, of you know different types of uh, maybe video essays and whatnot. But I really am excited to check this one out. Um, this is a, a wonderful, uh, wonderful film I've heard. Joe Dante directs this one. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited about this one. So moving on from here, let's actually talk about my favorite film of the entire decade. It's another science fiction horror film, and I'm sure you automatically already kind of know what this one is because it's directed by John Carpenter, and it came out the year after this Joe Dante film. So 1982, we're talking about The Thing. Oh, Ania Morricone's score just transcends this film. Holy shit, this film is just amazing. Practical effects, John Carpenter's uh, direction, Kurt Russell's performance, everyone's performance in this film, the grotesque practical effects, everything about this speaks just how joyous this film is for me. It's gross, it's wonderful, it's perfect. I, I don't really know how to explain it too much. I really wish I had the Arrow edition of this film. Um, it's just absolutely wonderful. And uh, right, so this is the original theatrical um, poster. I actually have it uh, in the hallway because I love that film so much. And then we have the Scream Factory edition with the double double features. And then there's the commissioned artwork right there with Kurt Russell and a flamethrower and trust nobody in this film. Uh, I'm sure most of you have already seen the thing, but like, good God, this is a perfect film. So the eighties, like I said, have so many films to choose from. What about you? What are your favorite films from the 1980s? Tell me some of those down in the comment section down below. I'm really curious to know uh, what your choices are. And I also uh, kind of want to know what some what are some 1980s films that you haven't seen. So let's actually move on from the 80s to the 1990s. So moving on to the 1990s, we just have to talk about this film. It's one of the best films ever made. And everyone agrees with me on this one. It's even better than the original and, and everything that's ever made after it. What am I talking about? I'm talking about 1990s Predator 2. Right, Predator 2 is the absolute best film, probably uh, of all time. Okay, I can't, I can't do this anymore. Uh, this isn't my choice. Uh, although I do enjoy this one because Danny Glover. Um, and also, I really, I wanted to talk about Predator uh, in the 1980s because I love that film so much. It's another perfect film for me, um, more in the action horror side of things. But Predator 2 is fun, but it's definitely not my favorite film of all time uh, from this decade, particularly. I actually want to talk about a, a film that came out during my birth year. And so it just shows, goes to show you how important this film could be for me. I'm talking about Francis Ford Coppola's Bram Stoker's Dracula. Oh, I need to get this uh, in a better edition. I know it just got put out on 4K and the vinyl just got released and stuff. And, and there's so many, oh, this movie is just so perfect. It's such a great film. Um, it's like gothic, it's sexual, it's horrific. Um, it's got a great score to it. Um, Gary Oldman. Uh, just look look at Gary Oldman right there. Like, look how creepy he is. And just there's, you know, there's Keanu Reeves in this film. Winona Ryder. Come on, Winona Ryder. That's like one of the biggest sells here. Anthony Hopkins. There's there's all these people in this film are just phenomenal. And, uh, you know, it's been a while since I've seen this movie, which is a, a big mistake on my part because I definitely need to watch this again very, very soon. Um, and I hope that uh, many of you have uh, seen this film too because it's just really, really wonderful. If you uh, are interested in Dracula, like obviously watch the 1931 Dracula, you know, with Bela Lugosi, and then also watch the Christopher Lee Draculas with Peter Cushing uh, and the like, like 1958 the Horror Dracula. But uh, seriously, go like go watch all the Dracula films, uh, even like Nosferatu from 1922. But 1992, 
Dracula, Francis Ford Coppola had his hand in this amazing, amazing adaptation of Bram Stoker's novel, and it's really wonderful. It's very bloody. It's very sexual. There's even wolf transformations. It's wonderful. It's a great film. Check it out, please. Um, so what about uh, a film that I haven't seen from the 1990s? In fact, I actually just recently picked this up. Um, it's an Arrow video, and um, let me look at what time this came out. Uh, 1999, so the very, very end of the decade. I was looking through my my films and uh, I was looking for horror films in the 90s that I hadn't seen yet and I don't know if um, th I'm sure this is a little bit of a horror film and I honestly don't know too much about this um, this film in particular but I've heard really great things and I heard it's like a precursor to some other uh, films but I'm talking about Takashi Mike's audition right here um, Takashi Mikey's uh, I Regardless, I've seen some of his films. I love 13 Assassins, and I also have seen The Blade of the Immortal, so those are more recent things that he's done. But uh, I know I know Takashi has made so many films, like a lot of films, and I, I know I haven't seen all of them. But Audition is one that I've heard is just absolutely wonderful and like one of his best works. And so I had to pick this one up. Um, let's see if there's the alternate artwork. Ooh, that's wonderful. Look at that. Like, I hadn't even seen that yet. So, um, yeah. I cannot wait to watch this particular film. Um, it's one of those films that I will definitely have to be in a specific mood for um, because, um, yeah, just like it's, it looks like one of those cult films that's going to be very dark, like there's going to be some revenge elements to it. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this J-horror film, and I hope you are too. Um, but what about you? What are your favorite films from the 1990s? I'm actually curious, and I want to know. Um, I'm, I'm, tell me down in the comment section down below what are some of your favorites uh, what are some films you haven't seen from 1990s let's move on here to the 2000s all right so 2000s I also ran into a similar problem when I was looking through my uh, film collection of films that I haven't seen from the 2000s I've actually seen most of the horror films that I own when it comes to the 2000s and 2010s so I had to figure out what I needed to watch and I have actually talked about this in the past I'm talking about the Ringu collection right here. I'm actually talking about Ring Zero, or you know, Ring with a zero and a cross through it. I've only seen Ringu, uh, the, like the first Ring, uh, and I've also obviously seen the American version, but I haven't seen the second Ring or Ring Zero, which I think is a prequel um, to Samara's story, or uh, not Samara, not in this particular film, uh, Sadako. Yes. <laughs> See, I'm so ingrained in the American culture that I, I get these things wrong. Sadako's, uh, you know, background. And so I'm really looking forward to um, the prequel here. And I, I've heard it's definitely one of the weakest of the of these three films. But um, regardless, I, I'm looking forward to it. And uh, yeah, this is a beautiful Arrow box set, Arrow video box set. And I absolutely love it. So let's, let's pull that one out, actually. There's Ring 2. And here's Ring 0 right here. Really wonderful, wonderful film. Let's look at the opposite side. Ring 0. Oh, that's so creepy. Um, yeah, looks like, uh, uh, some, some baby, uh, psychedelic action. I don't really, I don't know about that. I don't like it, but so yeah, I'm really looking forward to watching this film and also watching ring, ring zero. Uh, I just said the same thing ring two, uh, and also this other, this other, uh, film. Anyway, I, I'm, I'm ranting now. So let's actually move on from this to my favorite film of the decade when it comes to horror. Now this one, some people like might say this isn't really terribly too horror based. It's my maybe more horror fantasy. Like there's even some realism involved in this film. But this is literally the film that has made me cry the most in my entire life. And I love watching it on Halloween. It is a tradition of mine. I actually have two versions of the film. Uh, I have a 4K and I have the criterion of it because I love this film that much. And by the way, anyone who can figure out the record, the, the vinyl of the score of this film by Javier Navarrete, please fucking send that to me or tell me about it. And I, I really want to know because I, I want my hands on that because it's just so amazing. Um, and I'm assuming you already kind of guessed um, based on my description of the, the composer of the film. I'm actually talking about Guillermo del Toro's Pan's Labyrinth from 2006. I have both versions, like I said, right here, uh, the 4K version uh, and then the Criterion Edition. In fact, I actually haven't even really looked at the differences between special features. Um, but obviously I would assume that uh, a lot of the special features on the Criterion are a little bit better than this, but this is such a visually stunning film 
and um, a, a film that, like it's a fairy tale, right? It's a fairy tale that um, kind of plays on the horrors of war and the horrors of what war can do to a family and what our imagination can do to kind of escape from that horrific reality. And it also speaks a lot about um, the Hispanic culture um, that has dealt with the Spanish Civil War and Del Toro has made several films uh, involved with this, like Devil's Backbone, for instance, that um, really kind of highlights on this topic. And uh, it's a really personal uh, set of films for him. But this is literally the best Del Toro film. I, I know a lot of people have Shape of Water, which is in the corner right over there, as well, one of his best films. Devil's Backbone is also really, really great. Um, Hellboy's fun. Um, Del Toro is just a really great guy, honestly, and just overall. But Pan's Labyrinth is definitely, hands down, my favorite film, my favorite horror film, um, probably from the 2000s. It's just absolutely wonderful. Um, it's super melancholic, um, but it is it's just something that you need to watch. Uh, it's just so amazing, and uh, I'm going to watch it every Halloween because that's definitely just my tradition. So what about you? What are your favorite films from the 2000s? I'm kind of curious to know. So let's move on from here to the 2010s, to almost the current era of what, where we are right now. So now we are nearing the end of these uh, horror decade recommendations. The first film is a film that, uh, once again, I was looking through my collection, I couldn't figure out anything that I hadn't seen, but then this one stuck out and I actually just recently picked it up because I was like, whoa, like, of course, I, I have to talk about this movie, but this movie has been like stuck in my mind for the longest time, but I still haven't seen it. It's 2014's Good Night, Mommy. And this is directed by a pair, Veronica Franz and Severin uh, Fiala. Um, and I think they recently did a film called The Lodge. Uh, I watched that. I could be wrong if it's them, by the way. So, you know, correct me if, if, I'm, if I'm wrong. I watched The Lodge and I enjoyed it. Uh, it's, it's a good film, but I've heard this film is utterly disturbing. Um, it's about uh, this mother who has reconstructive surgery. It's very much like was Eyes Without a Face, which is behind me somewhere in the Criterion Collection. Um, but I, that's what I would assume a lot of the inspiration came from. And so this is a movie that has been, definitely been kind of in my mind, in my purview for the last few years, and I still haven't seen it yet. So I definitely pulled the trigger and bought this movie, and I'm really excited to check it out because I've heard it's just utterly terrifying. And so let's actually move on from here to my favorite film, my favorite horror film of the 2010s. And this comes to as no surprise to any of you who have seen this channel for the longest time. I'm actually, I also, just like with Pan's Labyrinth, I have two editions of this film. I have the 4K, and I also have the Steelbook, the Region 2 Steelbook. I think I got it from Zavi. Um, but I am talking about Robert Eggers' 2015's The Witch. Now, The Witch is one of those films that just sticks with me. Well, one, because, like, I have that Black Phillips shirt. I don't, I don't have it on right now. I also have the screenplay. Um, it's just, it's one of those films that I remember exactly where I was when I watched this movie. I was in the theater, I was by myself, I was kind of just disturbed by all of the, 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 the score and like the, the sound editing and everything that was going on in the film. And uh, it's just one of those films that I think would really, uh, was really what got me into the current horror uh, fan that I am today. Uh, the horror films that I, I really that really stick with me, the ones that are a little bit more atmospheric, the ones that are a little bit more slow burn, um, well executed in, in ways. Um, you know, some people uh, like this movie and some people don't, and that's perfectly fine. But this is a movie uh, that has really fantastic dialogue, really fantastic acting, and uh, just absolutely wonderful, wonderful things that go on in this. It, utterly chilling and uh, utterly disturbing. I even have the score. In fact, I even. Uh, I used to work um, at a coffee shop, and sometimes if I worked in the kitchen, you could play your own music, and I would sometimes, uh, you know, jump back and forth between my music, and sometimes I'd put on this soundtrack for this, and then somebody would come around the corner, you know, maybe a minute later, is like, Nathan, what the hell are you listening to? And I'm like, well, I'm just trying to conjure up Black Phillip. Come on, just let me do it. So, uh, <laughs> and um, anyway, uh, long story short, this is my favorite film from the 2010s when it comes to horror films. What about you? Um, there's a lot of films to choose from from all of these decades. I, I'm really curious to know what are some films that you haven't seen during these decades? What are some films that are your favorite from each of these decades? I want to thank you so much uh, for joining me. And I know this is near the end of the you know, the October, and so we're heading into November, but I'm just so thankful for all of you for checking out this video. Everyone's doing such great jobs. Um, uh, you know, there's amazing people out there talking about amazing different things, uh, not all just horror. Uh, so I want to give a special shout out to everybody 
in this community. Well, apparently I'm recording this later on in the day because apparently my camera shut off and did not record the end of this video, but I was giving uh, a special thank you to everyone in the community who has been uh, a part of it. And I am, I'm just very, very blessed to have each and every one of you here. And uh, there's so many people to um, shout out. And so I'm just going to go ahead and just say thank you to every one of you um, and everybody who has just watched these videos. And I hope you enjoy it. And uh, I'm just I'm very, very thankful for all of you. So anyway, give it, give this video a like, comment down below, share this video, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you next time. I'm not Jones and around.